Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. This is Perpetuality. You join me today and we're checking out two of the field watches that caught my eye this year and they are both from Seiko. On the left we have the Alpinist and I consider this to be the smaller 38mm new Alpinist 1959 recreation and on the right we have here the new to Seiko, the Land Tortoise. And uh, I've got a lot of thoughts to, to share on both of these watches. I think they make compelling field watches and everyday wearing watches. Let's check out if they're for you and figure out if they're worth investing in. Now, I don't want to put you guys to sleep with all the details, so I'll leave the numbers that matter on the screen for you. You might be thinking that from the numbers alone, the Land Tortoise will be an unwieldy, wider wearing watch, and that the Alpinist will be just perfect, but you'll have to see just how they wear on the wrist, you'll be surprised. You'd be completely forgiven for thinking that the 1959 Alpinist is the better wearing watch of the two. And at 46.2mm lug to lug length, it is the watch that I'd naturally gravitate to. 38mm wide, that's kind of the golden ratio for smaller wrists as mine at 6.25 inch circumference. Now the Land Tortoise caught me by surprise. There's only a millimeter of separation between both watches at lug to lug length. At 45.2mm and roughly 42mm wide, it is actually a watch that is different from the Captain Willard. It looks like it's the same case, but it isn't really quite the same watch. The Captain Willard is actually a little bit thicker, and it actually runs a little bit longer in lug to lug length. I just really feel like this watch hit the mark for me, and I think it looks fantastic on the strap. The Land Tortoise is the watch that nobody expected Seiko to make, but we're glad that they did. This turtle-shaped case is synonymous with the brand, and it's been used in the legs of the Captain Willard. Now this is different than the Captain Willard. Even though it's got that same shape, the thickness of the case is only 11.7 millimeters versus the 13 millimeter odd of the Captain Willard. It does however have a screw down crown and this lends to its 200 meter water resistance. Case finishing is pretty par for course. You have this radial finishing on the lugs and I do feel like for the price point, it is good quality. There's good separation between the two types of surfaces, polished and brushed. Now the Land Tortoise, thinking about where they position this watch, at under $1,000, halfway point to 1000 I think it's exceptional value. It's where Seiko used to be with the SKX. Now, this one comes with a canvas strap. The hardware is pretty good. I'd have to comment that the feeling of the strap is a good match for the watch. It has leather eyelets to prevent the canvas from fraying. And there are enough micro adjustments or points here, holes, for pretty much every size of wrist you can expect. Now the interesting thing is you're not getting a Kanagawa wave. In fact, you're getting something very unique to this watch. It is a ground to air emergency code or legend rather. If you take a look here, each of the little uh, sections of the um, case back, denotes a particular letter. And you will be able to use these letters to draw on ground to signal to air for emergency purposes to get rescue. Now I think that's just exceptional to have. One thing to comment on the Land Tortoise, it has a bi-directional bezel. That's right, 
It is a silent, non-clicking, bi-directional bezel. Mark from Long Island Watches did a fantastic tutorial on how to read compass bezels. And the way they work is you have north, west, east, and south parts of the bi-directional bezel. What you'd like to do with this is figure out which hemisphere that you're in first. Knowing that, you'd first set the time to standard time, and then you'd use the hour hand relative to the sun, look at where that is relative to noon, and the halfway point, the bisection of that, would be your cardinal direction. So we turn the bezel to indicate that that would be south. The opposite of that would be north. So having a sense of where north and south is, you can point yourself in the right direction. I think that's just the neatest thing to have. Now let's pretend that you were going, you were in the southern hemisphere, rotating the bezel back to reset it. What you do instead is actually point noon, 12 o'clock, to where the sun is in the sky, and then relative to where the hour hand is and the halfway point between those, you will have essentially north. So we'll rotate the bezel to indicate that's north and the opposite of the other side will be south. Once again, a very unique complication. Once I've learned how to use it, I had immediate gratitude or interest into having a watch like this. I just think it's the greatest thing ever. <laughs> A stark contrast to the Land Tortoise, the 1959 Alpinist recreation is a much more simplistic mountaineer's watch. You got the time, you have the date, and that's about it. A simple dial with triangular indices to denote the 6, 9, and 12 with a date at 3 o'clock. There is a sapphire crystal with beautiful dome distortion. I do like this. If you're a fan of the Smith's Everest, I think you'll like this one too. Now I'm a little bit disappointed as most of this watch is excellent but that 19mm lug width on this bracelet kind of makes it weird. I know that it is in proportion to the 38mm case and I do accept that, that that is a good look for this watch. I just wish they went with a 20mm so I can just switch out the straps. Now there are brushed surfaces. Half of the lugs are brushed and the other half is polished. And I think that there is good delineation between the two. Being 129 millimeters thick, it is stubbier, chunkier than the Land Tortoise. And that actually shows on the side of the case where it's rather slab-slided. Now, if you're not a fan of that, maybe you're a fan of the bracelet. It is brushed and polished at the center links within the inside of the links. The clasp itself is also brushed and there is the Seiko logo to denote that you have a Seiko watch. And I feel like the finishing is really fantastic on this 1959 Alpinist. You really have to handle it in person to get a sense of quality for it. The clasp I do wish had more micro adjustments. Two is too few, four would be perfect. It does inspire confidence with how it opens. It is the standard Seiko Fair in terms of the open clasp with a double button deployment. And as you can see, it's simple, it works. It makes sense for the price point that it's going for. The beating heart of this watch is the Caliber 6R35 and it does have 70 hour power reserve along with beating at 21,600 vibrations per hour. It is a workhorse movement and you've heard that terminology a lot, but I expect it to be a very reliable movement as it's been used in a fair amount of watches. Now I do feel like this watch and it's finishing the bracelet and the quality behind it, it is actually making more sense to me as to why this is more expensive than the Land Tortoise. I've really come to appreciate the dial of the 1959 Alpinist. I do like the fact that even though this is a stamped dial, the indices have good depth on them. Now, I do have a couple of complaints. The indices, though they're great to look at, I've noticed that on this particular watch, they are less than perfect. There are scratches on them. At this six o'clock indicator, there's a slight scratch and some tool marks indicating that this was applied rather hastily. And it could be a factory error, but I was a little bit disappointed to see that. There's a running uh, seconds track right around the dial, and it kind of splits partway through the date. The date has that controversial 3 o'clock indicator, and I feel like it's alright because it balances out the dial. Overall, the sunburst grey is my pick. I've seen the cream colored dial, and it appears more yellow. I do like this a lot more. 
Where the alpinist is a little bit more elegant, the land tortoise is more useful and I would like to say purposeful. The dial itself is gloss, there is no sunburst. You have these prominent arrow hand for the hour and a syringe-like hand for the minutes with a very simple counterbalance lollipop seconds hand. Now, of course, the overall dial execution is great, being mostly stamped, and the Seiko logo is also stamped on there too. Dial printing is excellent. There is a date at 4.30, which not everybody's going to like, but at least they've blacked out the date wheel. Now, I'm a little bit disappointed. There is dust on the dial. I thought it was my camera. I thought it was my lens. I've wiped it down. But there is dust sprinkled all over this beautiful dark blue dial. And I feel like Seiko really needs to work on their quality control. An exceptional dial like this with its dark blue hue and gloss-like texture will show imperfections a lot more. I do wish that Seiko got rid of the 20 bar and cleaned up the dial. At 6 o'clock, 9 and 12, there is this dark silver metallic tail for legibility. It offers an interesting look. Both these watches are very different and I doubt that we'll be using them to go mountaineering. You might, and you'll be happy to find out that they'll serve their purpose. I did think that the Alpinist was the one I've wanted more, but I walked away desiring the Land Tortoise. It just represents better value for money. That useful compass bezel, once you learn how to use it, and that case back, I think is just icing on the cake. The Alpinist, although it wears gorgeous in terms of the bracelet and the overall execution of the case, it is an exceptional watch, but it just leaves me a little bit cold. I think part of the reason why is I'm having a lot more fun using the Land Tortoise as an everyday watch. Although, there's no denying that the Alpinus is beautiful. Let's check out the Loom. Both of these watches have very similar Loom, and they are exceptional. It is Seiko's Lumabrite. It does have a blue-green hue to it. Longevity and the amount of Loom material is just about the same on both watches. The Alpinus is maybe a little bit more distinctive. The 6, 9, and 12 indicators are pretty much well loomed with that triangular indice. But the Land Tortoise is no slouch. It's distinctive arrow-like hour hand, and its copious amount of loom as the loom plots are larger lend for a more useful appearance. Now, thank you for watching. If you liked today's video, please consider subscribing, and I will catch you in the next one.